Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Ako po si Brian Arda and we are live mula po dito sa Pilipinas. Good evening everyone. I'm live here in the USA. I'm Ginger Leopoldo and welcome to the international book launch of Rudy Liparada's Red Rising Cordilleras. In the middle of the pandemic, I bet that many of us are looking for a good book to read. Yes, that's correct, Ginger. Ultimo, even me, no, gusto ko rin ng isang magandang bawasahin because in between hours of working from home, mainam na meron tayong mga binabasa na other content mula dun sa mga nakikita natin sa ating social media feeds. In fact, pamagat pa lang ng libro na ito, napaka-interesting na ng nobela because ito ay nakaset sa Cordillera. Uh, Ginger, You have long been in the States, Dom. Meron ka bang mga nababalitaan tungkol dito sa ating, uh, sa Pilipinas, especially sa Cordillera? You know, I'm a little bit familiar with the struggle with the Chico Dam. Mm-hmm. Kunti lang, mm-hmm. though. 
<laughs> so I'm very much looking forward to hearing more about the story and um, about the strength and the struggle uh, in that region. Correct. At I hope na pagka nakabili ka na rin ng libro na ating ilo-launch today, ay mas marami ka pang matututunan about that particular region in the Philippines. In fact, Ginger, mahaba ang kasaysayan ng Cordillera, mahaba yung kasaysayan ng kanilang paglaban. Maraming binunong atake ang Cordillera, lalo na nitong nakaraang taon, kasagsagan ng pandemya. Binaklas ang monumento ni na Makling Dulag, Lumbaya Gayudan at Pedro Dungo. Pabuti na lang at sama-sama itong naitayo muli ng mga mamamayan ng Cordillera. Ginger, patuloy pa rin ang red tagging sa mga leader. Pinaka-recent na ito ay yung kay Wendell Bulingit, chairperson ng Cordillera People's Alliance at mga katulad pang ibang individual at mga asosasyon na aktibong nagsusulong para sa karapatan sa lupang ni Nuno. Hmm. You know, I, ha- I think I've heard about those issues, Brian. It's disheartening but... I really admire how the people of the Cordillera have managed to reinstall the monument and reclaim their space. I also admire the red-tagged individuals, organizations, and media outfits who remain steadfast against these attacks. In many ways, Sir Rudy's novel explores the same struggles which readers would surely find informative and inspirational. Yes, and speaking of inspiration, Ginger, and everyone po nakasama natin sa mga oras na ito, uh, we would like to invite you to offer a moment to mourn and pay respects to our dear Professor Neil Doloricon. Uh, Professor Doloricon was a visual artist, educator, and chairperson emeritus of the Concerned Artists of the Philippines. Uh, sadly, we lost Professor Neil yesterday due to a particular illness, and his passing weighs heavily on all of us, like the mountain on the vast Cordillera. Uh, let us offer a minute of silence to honor his memory and lifelong work of art serving the people. Like the book Red Rising Cordillera, Sir Neil's colorful stories and contribution in promoting progressive art and culture will always and should always be remembered and continued. Rest in power, Sir Neil. Mabuhay ang alaala ni Sir Neil Doloricon, isang tunay na artista ng bayan. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Ginger, alam mo, palaban talaga ang mga kababayan natin sa Cordillera at kitang-kita yon dito sa libro na ilulungsad natin ngayong araw. Puwento ito ng katapangan, pagkakaibigan at maging ng kasaysayan. Pihadong marami sa atin mga nanonood ngayon ang makakarelate. Kaya hindi na natin patatagalin pa, Ginger. No? Opisyal na po nating sinisimulan ang paglulungsad ng Red Rising Cordillera sa paunang pananalita ni Babet Lolarga ng Baguio Writers Group. Maalab na pagbati sa inyong lahat mula sa Baguio Writers Group o BWG. We are a community organization made up of writers. We live to celebrate literature from the Cordilleras and to nurture the souls of Cordillera writers. Our long-standing motto is, We write to live and we live in Baguio. Rudy Liporada, once a Baguio boy, has kept his ties here through his column in the Northern Dispatch. I surmise that his stint as a newspaper man in the former Baguio gold ore exposed him to the stories of their reporters and correspondents about the abuses of martial law 
from the 1970s to the 80s. I am also guessing that it is through these stories that he was able to weave his action-packed novel, Red Rising Cordilleras, during his retirement in California. When you read his novel, you will find yourself concluding that things are not what they seem. Let us not romanticize the mist-shrouded mountains of the Cordilleras. We know that since early in the 20th century, the Americans and their Filipino allies coveted what was inside those mountains, the mines. We know that the villages of indigenous peoples were pillaged and burned, their leaders murdered, so infrastructure such as dams could be built. But, as Manong Rudy wrote and spoke through his main characters, the Cordilleras also have a rich history of resistance. That meant taking up arms against the oppressors. It is the year 2021 already, and yet some of the conditions the author wrote about still persist. Community leaders have been red-tagged, or worse, even summarily killed. That is why it is incumbent on such groups such as ours, the BWG, to support the works of those who bear witness, like Manong Rudy. We in the BWG congratulate him and are proud of this association with him. We enjoin the public to get your copy of Red Rising Cordilleras. Thank you. Maraming salamat, Ms. Babet. I already purchased my copy yesterday. It should arrive tomorrow. Now, I am really curious about how the book was written and how the story goes. To give us a quick peek, here's an excerpt to be read by Kabunyan Palaganas of the Baguio Writers Group. The boy Kujamat is dreaming of the river. Its ripples glistened underneath the moonlit night as its crackles whimpered, splashing over wetted rocks. Then the sun sprung from nowhere and stung the moon with its rays until the moon melted behind the mountains. Victorious, the sun radiated with all its might and descended closer to earth, burning the river to a boil, to a raging boil, until the river rose to a growl. The waters grappled their way up the mountains, roaring, unmindful of the shrieking trees that toppled with the onslaught of the rushing torrents. Boulders rolled up the mountains, flicked by slapping walls of water. The river thundered, dragging the uprooted trees and boulders of the village. They snaked, roaring, growling, underneath the stilted huts of the village. The trees and boulders smashed on the stilts with deafening thuds. Bug, bug, bug. The door thundered. Kujamat jolted up. In the dark hut, sliced only with beams of sunlight, through tiny holes on the walls. The boy felt the wooden floor beneath his mat shudder with ear-piercing thuds. Still in his sonorous state, he said to himself, it cannot be the river. Bug, bug, bug! Lokatan yo dai toy! Nohaan, bagpaan mi dai toy nga ritaw! A gruff voice commanded behind the door, threatening to smash it down if those inside the hut will not open up. Bug, bug, bug! The pole that barred the door rattled. Kojamet felt himself picked up. His face smacked on the bare breast of his mother. The woman huddled him with his sister and father at the corner far from the door. He felt the thumping of his mother's heart. They were fast, faster than the pounding on the door. As his mother set him down, his sister clutched him to bury his face beneath her blossoming breasts. Her heart pounded too, in dissonance, with a pounding on the door. Bug, bug, bug! O kindayo! Manlukat kayo! The voice cursed. There were also wailing from outside of the house. Gunfire. 
Uh, as in no katadagita? The boy's mother asked in a sob, trembling voice. For sure, tulados, the father said. Soldiers. The pounding on the door became more turbulent. The rattling of the pole more berserk. The spikes that fastened the slots creaked, almost like a shrieking. The pounding persisted until it reached a deafening crescendo. In a final smash, the pole slammed on the floor and the door thundered on the planks. And dawn light flashed into the hut. Maraming salamat sa iyong pagbabasa ng CP mula sa nobela, no? Uh, Kabunyan. Ginger, kung, kung ganun yung uh, naririnig natin mula doon sa pagbabasa ni Kabunyan, uh, mula doon sa nobela, naisip ko tuloy baka pwede rin na gawan ng audio book itong uh, Red Rising Cordilleras natin, no? What do you think? I think so, Brian. Yes, that would be a great project. Pero sa ngayon, no, suportahan muna natin itong aklat na ilulungsad natin ngayong araw. Maaari po itong mabili sa Amazon.com at sa Kindle. And this September, it will also be available sa Mount Cloud Bookshop sa Baguio City. Okay. So mga kasama at mga kaibigan, ngayon po ay meron ng patikimang ang aklat na ating ilulungsad. Pakinggan naman po natin kung ano ang masasabi ng mga kapwa manunulat ni Sir Rudy Hingil sa Red Rising Cordilleras. Our first reviewer is a writer, poet, and editor based in Baguio. As a cultural worker for cause-oriented institutions and organizations, she immersed in the indigenous communities of the Cordillera and has dedicated her work to raising awareness on social justice and rights. Her award-winning children's story, Ang Pangat, Ang Ilog, at Ang Lupang ni Nuno, is about the historic Chico Dam struggle. Let's hear from Vice Chairperson of the Dapayan de Cultura Iti Cordillera, an alliance of cultural workers and organizations and artists in the Cordillera, Ms. Luci Maranan. Views to Red Rising Cordillera. After reading Rudy's book, I tried to assume two personae. Thus, two views to the book. The first persona is of one who is familiar with Cordillera ethnography and demographic and an advocate of the rights of national minorities. Being an activist in the mid-70s, whose early praxis was guided and inspired by the Igorot's fierce struggle against the Chico Dam project, which clearly symbolized development aggression and national oppression, and knowing that many of us at that time understood the legitimacy of armed resistance, the trials and tribulations of the characters in the novel strongly resonate with me. The portraits are an array of interesting middle-class characters bound by time-tested friendship a priest, a military officer, and a student leader. There are, of course, the villagers whose resistance to the project is the very reason that compels the urban intellectuals to take the road less traveled. All three are products of the tumultuous period of martial law as explicitly relayed by the author. The political and socio-economic unrest and upheaval make it imperative for them to make life-changing decisions. The process of transformation, remolding, and regression are effectively and carefully nuanced by the author, thus making me an observer of situations and validator of processes familiar and true. I rejoice over the characters' decisions while double-guessing their next moves. The grandeur of the Cordillera fastness is expertly and lyrically captured by Rudy Liporada, as though I was once again viewing an endless canvas of mystery, wonder, and awe. The author subtly reminds readers 
that the sheer beauty and wealth of the ancestral domain and the need for its sustained defense against plunder and militarization are continuing realities decades after the Chico Dam struggle was won. How the Igorots' lives in their village was disrupted by government intrusion is so vivid that it actually plays cinematically in my mind. The characters' initially disjointed lives find their way into connectedness as they play out the events of that period. As they reveal themselves to be so closely related to each other in ideology and politics. From bourgeois lives, they are tested and steeled by the rigors of life in the revolution. And that is where some interesting unraveling happens. However, even if the author says it is a work of fiction, I couldn't resist asking about certain cultural inconsistencies. Though it was said that it was a composite representation of various villages and situations reminiscent of the Chico Dam struggle, some scenes and practices did not resonate with what I know academically and uh, empirically. All in all, the first view is exhilarating, a bit nostalgic too. All that idealism and feistiness and spirit to be in the eye of the storm is indeed inspiring. My other second persona assumed to be being introduced to the Cordillera people and why they push back so-called development projects that endanger the patrimony of the coming generations. The realistic rendering of the military soldiers' demeanor and language explain why, they, why there is so much distrust and rancor towards government armed forces who ensure that development projects get implemented. I begin to appreciate the period of activism in the 70s and why the characters whose lives were intertwined through their juvenile and blissful ad adventures came to a crossroad. It was a watershed in radicalism in the country in recent history. It is also an introduction to comprehending factors that an individual needs and is bound to take a stand as a social being. It is enlightening and liberating to read about lives taking unexpected turns set against the backdrop of massive inequality and crisis. The novel is an eye-opener that no one actually lives in a vacuum, that beliefs, views, and material contexts are what motivate a person to join social movements and even dare to take the inconvenient choice. I recommend that you get a copy Choose your vantage point and take your own view of Red Rising Cordillera. Thank you and salute to Rudy Liparada. Thank you for your insights, Luci. Uh, next, let us listen to our second reviewer who is based in the United States, connecting with many migrant Filipino youth who wish to learn more about the stories and struggles of our homeland. Serving as the executive director of Got Green, an environmental justice organization based in Seattle, Washington, Jill is also part of the Secretariat of Bayan USA and a member of Gabriela Seattle. Let's hear from Jill Mangaliman. Red Rising Cordilleras by Rudy D. Liporada gives us a glimpse of life under the Marcos regime before and after the Declaration of Martial Law in Baguio City and the Cordillera Mountains, a story that spans 8,607 square miles. From a literary standpoint, it is clear who the antagonists are. It is the AFP and their brutality, and off the bat, they are attacking the indigenous village in search for a mysterious Alunu. Shortly afterwards, the story jumps back in time to tell the story of three friends, Carlo, Julius, and Noel in Baguio, and traces their life into joining the New People's Army. People with new names in a monolithic cordillera, unseen by the fascistas, waging guerrilla warfare. 
It must be said that the contents of this book, while providing a glimpse into the reality of the atrocities of the Marcos regime, <clears throat> include graphic and triggering scenes of rape and torture. As hard as it is, we cannot look away. In the face of historical revisionism by the Marcos dynasty and the reactionary forces in, of the Philippine government, the book does not shy away from the horrors that the masses of Filipinos face under the Marcos dictatorship. While the book is fictional, it draws from the very real experiences of the people in that time. If we ignore that these vile acts happen and are not moved to want to do something, to fight a system that allows for it, then we do a disservice to the victims and survivors of violence. In fact, rape, torture, and massacres happen to this day, recently with Angel Rivas, Lenny Rivas, and Willie Rodriguez. It has only become more brutal with the U.S. Duterte regime. Liparada uses various literary techniques to tell the story of the three friends to create a vivid and engaging story. In Alinu's Revenge, in a mere two pages, the author creates a deep-set tension and silence to draw us into the revolutionary fighter's ambush to end in a loud and satisfying sense of justice. In contrast to these moments of action, we are also into the bustling hum of Christmas time in Baguio City while due to the rising cost of goods would be the last celebration for a majority of the citizens of Baguio, including Carlo, Julius, and Noel, who would be leaving behind the comforts of home for the dense forests and peaks of the Cordilleras to help address the same cause of poverty that a majority of those in the city face. Liporada creates lucid visuals of life in the Philippines at this time, <clears throat> wielding restraint and outspokenness with his words. On the ending, it is not a happy one for sure, and I don't want to spoil it for you, but I will say the concept of retribution justice may be a hard thing to grasp for U.S.-based people, especially for those who believe in nonviolence or, or are against capital punishment. For those who have had loved ones lost or family members lost from state terror, this may be the only form of justice that they can get. And I want to end with a call to action to all Filipinos to learn about our past and current struggles in the Philippines, to continue the solidarity that we have had with the Cordillera people, to take this first step and read Red Rising Cordilleras. It's a very engaging story and I hope you read it. Thank you. Last but not least is our third reviewer who is a poet writer, and renowned activist, to say the least. Let's hear from the chairperson, Emeritus of International League of People's Struggle, Professor Jose Maria Sison. Dear friends and book lovers, Red Rising Cordilleras, the novel of Rudy T. Lipurada, has for its panoramic background the entire Cordilleras, including Baguio City, the villages of Cordillera, the resource-rich valleys and heights. The fluid field of the People's War, conducted by the new People's Army under the leadership of the Communist Party of the Philippines. The people of the Cordilleras are fortunate because of their natural riches, but these are at the same time the cause of their misfortune when foreign aggressors like Spanish colonialism and U.S. imperialism and the Filipino reactionaries covet and grab such riches for their own profit. By their own resistance, the Goro tribes of the Cordilleras overcame their differences to unite against Spanish colonialism and prevent it from grabbing all the gold mines. They joined up with the Filipino revolutionaries of 1896 including the Ilocanos and Tagalogs to put an end to Spanish colonialism. But U.S. imperialism interrupted the revolution by unleashing its war of conquest. It came to the Cordilleras with troops trained in massacring Indians and using far superior military forces to grab the gold mines and other natural riches and to deploy the American religious missionaries and the primary uh, public school system. The historical period of the novel is specifically the years of Marcos' rule, before and after the 1972 Declaration of Martial Law under the semi-colonial and semi-feudal ruling system. 
The novel draws life and intensity from the social and personal conflicts arising from the brutal Marcos regime and its scheme to put up a mega hydroelectric dam project in collaboration with the World Bank in order to sweep away the homes, farms, hunting grounds and burial grounds of the Igorot tribes to benefit the exploiting classes beyond the Cordilleras. The village of Chidlawan becomes the initial focus of attention in the novel as it brings together Pangat Lakai Samang, his granddaughter Lumayang, who has just returned from her studies in the city and a new incoming parish priest, Father Carlo Paterno. As a student in the city, Lumayang has become connected to the National Democratic Revolution and to the New People's Army expanding in the Cordilleras. She is tasked to facilitate the entry of the New People's Army to her village, and she is suspicious of the Catholic priest, Father Carlo, as a clerical fascist. The novelist uses a series of surprise twists in an ironic manner to keep his reader riveted to the book. In the first of surprise twist, Father Carlo proves himself uh, a devoted priest and servant to his parishioners and ultimately wins the heart of Lumayang after proving himself in confronting and outwitting the military officer of an enemy team in search of the NPA. Father Carlo is the first of three young Baguio City friends to be in the countryside of the Cordilleras to be with the people even if at first in the service of his God. The two other friends are Noel Altamonte and Julius Madrigal. The novel interweaves the trajectories of their lives and connects them to the rising of the people of the Cordilleras and the struggle of the NPA. Noel is the son of a successful and well-to-do doctor of medicine. He drives his own car and is happy-go-lucky but becomes a Kabatang Makabayan activist and revolutionary against the wishes of his well-to-do parents. Julius Madrigal is a cadet of the Philippine Military Academy and is bound to become a commissioned officer of the reactionary armed forces. After the proclamation of martial law in 1972, Noel Altamonte and his wife Lina are compelled to join the NPA and do mass work in the countryside. But after some time, he decides to return to the city due to his physical difficulties and due to the pregnancy of his wife, which he thinks would be better taken care of in the city. He falls into the trap set by his own uncle, Captain George Altamonte, who arrests him and uh, Lina and proves incapable of protecting them from the orders of General Tobias to torture them. Noel withstands the torture for a while until he sees his wife abused by the military torturers and decides to collaborate with the enemy. Lieutenant Julius Madrigal is assigned by his superiors to take charge of the arrest and safe house detention and torture of a leader of the revolutionary movement, Jose Saludo, his former beauty queen wife, Lillian Gomez, and a woman companion. After the escape of Saludo from the safe house and the rape and murder of the two women by a sergeant subordinate Julius is scapegoated by his superiors, charged and imprisoned as the rapist murderer. While in prison, he is eventually contacted by his friend, Father Carlo, through Sister Aurencia, to join the NPA and escape from prison. By this time, Carlo has become the NPA leader, Alino, after being tagged by the enemy as communists cooperating with the NPA. Embittered by the false charges of his superiors, Julius agrees to join the NPA and escape from prison. Before the escape, he receives revolutionary education from a fellow political prisoner, Arnulfo. The novelist uses the conversion of Julius to be a revolutionary and NPA commander to show how the correct strategy and tactics of the People's War have led to the expansion of the NPA from central Luzon to other regions. Lipurada also uses the dream of Julius as literary device to depict him as the biblical Joshua, teaming up with Carlos Moses against the Ethiopians and then the Egyptians. After escaping from prison with other comrades, Julius reunites 
with his friends Carlo and Noel in the countryside. He assumes the nom de guerre Paolo. He uses to the advantage of the NPA his knowledge of the enemy strategy and tactics. The three friends worked together well in the revolutionary movement until the return of Noel and Lina to the city. As a result of Noel's capture, torture and betrayal, the enemy succeeds in, in encircling the camp of Carlo and Julius. The enemy military officer Julius dies as a revolutionary martyr by diving on a grenade thrown by the enemy in order to save Carlo and others. The novel ends with vengeance exacted against the revolutionary turned renegade Noel by armed city partisans in the garb of two nuns, one of whom is Sister Aurentia, who is Julius's beloved. Noel is depicted as the example of the upper bête bourgeoisie who loves the comforts and fun of belonging to a well-to-do family, becomes a KM activist, and makes the effort to become a revolutionary but breaks at some point because he cannot stand the rigors of struggle, torture, and the threat of death. I commend the novelist for reflecting and putting life into the revolutionary struggle of the Igorots, the NPA in the countryside, and the Kabatang Makabayan, and the social and personal circumstances and peculiarities of the characters. His characterizations are credible because they are concrete and probable. I also commend the language and style of Liporada. He uses poetic language in describing the natural landscape of the Cordilleras. At the same time, he commands the pace of his narrative by using the crispy prose of Hemingway and the journalist. He is also fond of ending a chapter with a short sentence to imply or indicate the outcome of a previous narration of events. Only a master storyteller can use such a device. A lesser writer would make a long explication. The novel is excellent material for a film filled with overwhelming landscapes and dramatic figures in dramatic situations of life and death, social and personal conflicts, and romances such as those of Carlo and Lumayang, Julius and Aurentia, and even of the ill-fated Noel and Lina. I recommend that you read, enjoy, and learn from the book first, before you expect to watch an audiovisual version of it. There is already a movie script of the novel and deserves the attention of a serious producer. It is best to take hold of the book now, savor its full substance and style, and thereafter brace up for the film to be produced in due time. Thank you. Wow, Brian, what riveting reviews Miss Lucci, Miss Jill, and Sir Joma gave. You know, every Phil M should pick up this book. Again, Red Rising Cordilleras is available on Amazon and in Kindle and soon at Mount Cloud Bookshop in Baguio City. And Brian, did I hmm. tell you that I purchased my copy yesterday? It should arrive to my home tomorrow. Two day wow. prime shipping. So I'm very excited. Ah, that's good news. I'm also excited to purchase my own copy of the book. Anyway, Ginger, at this point, para bigyang kulay pa ang ating programa ngayong umaga, ngayong araw, we welcome po natin si Mike Legaspi with his colleagues from Bayan, USA for their song. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Kalatan Matayonan Bye bye ha Kalawaan Uuuway Thank you so much, Mike, Nikki, and Carlo of Bayan USA. Danum is composed by Sally Dumai. It means water in Cordillera. Kung ang lupa ay ba buhay ang tubig naman ang dumidilig at nagpapatuloy ang daloy ng buhay. Yes, there is a that's correct. <laughs> There is a line in that song that says, I wish I were a river so strong and mighty, then I shall flow towards freedom. Tama yun, Ginger. No? Nakakatuwa na makita na may mga kabataan ngayon na nagpapatuloy pa rin ng pag-aaral at nagpapatuloy pa rin na alamin ang mga katutubong awit na katulad ito. Good job, guys. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyo, Mike, and the rest of the gang from Bayan, USA. Ginger, at this point in our program, mapalad po tayo na makakausap ang may akda ng Red Rising Cordillera. Maaari po ninyong itype ang inyong mga tanong sa ating pong chat box at maaari po natin itong itanong sa ating ding, uh, uh, may akda manunulat mamaya. Pagkaman Bisaya, Ginger, lumaki si Sir Rudy Lipurada sa lungsod ng Baguio at inuturing na rin niya ang kanyang sarili na bahagi ng kaigurotan. Dati siyang seminarista at nagtapos sa UP Baguio na major in economics at minor in sociology. Naging freelance writer at photojournalist si Sir Rudy sa iba't ibang diaryo at magazine sa lungsod ng Baguio. Sa loob ng apat na taon, naging guru din siya sa Zambia, Africa. Noong panahon ng batas militar, dalawang taon siya. sila. At kay yung mga nasa Netherlands, nagpapasalamat tayo bahag alas stress ng madaling araw doon ay kasama rin natin sila sa programa. Marami pong salamat. Oh! Ibalik natin sila, Ma'am Lucci. Ayan, si Jill. Hi. Welcome po sa ating programa. At syempre si Professor Jose Maria Sison. Magandang uh, umaga po sa inyo. Hello. Uh, pwede ba ako mauna? Ako na ba mauna? Sige po, Sige po Ma'am Lucci. Oo. Um, uh, Rudy, 
Kasi syempre, nagkasama rin kami for a time no sa UP Baguio. And my memory of Rudy was uh, one of a very pensive man. Uh, meron siyang grupo ng mga oldies. Eh, hindi naman oldies, mga manong pala. <laughs> mga manong namin. Mga manong sa campus na yon sila yung laging mga nag-uusap at saka parang laging ano, no, intense yung discussions nila. Anyways. Mates ko, mga kaiskwela ko, mga marami ang may dugong igurot. In fact, my wife is also uh, half uh, bontok igurota. So yung clan niya is uh, nandun sila lahat sa bundok and usually namamasyal kami. And uh, during my advocacy days, uh, I call it advocacy now, uh, I was actually uh, living with the masses, dun sa mga particular uh, Uh, lugar, especially in Bontok, Ifugao, and uh, Binget. And I actually came across the seminal, seminal uh, groups of the NPA, and they told me their exploits and their plans and all of those things. <clears throat> At the same time, uh, as a uh, former Kabataang Makabayan, I have, I have kilalang kilala ko yung, ano, yung strategy and tactics ng ano, Satoria, ng ano ng people's uh, prolonged uh, protracted struggle. So um, being in the uh, hinterlands, I really um, have a feel of uh, the uh, customs of the uh, um, Cordillerans. Um, very vivid kaya halimbawa dun sa mummification scene dun sa ano sa libro. Nandoon ako nung minomomify yung isang certain Mr. Gulislis. So I saw that and uh, I actually thought about that in uh, in uh, Gold Ore and also in the Midland Courier and uh, I lifted that. I lifted that article in, into the uh, to the book. Ngayon yung <laughs> how I, how it started actually is I didn't even plan to write a novel. I did not Uh, nagkataon lang nandun ako sa Zambia na nagbakasyon ako sa Zimbabwe tapos pabalik ako ng Zambia nakasakay ako sa train and uh, yung mga yung, uh, at that time I was preparing for my lesson and we were on uh, as a feature writing uh, teacher, nagpiprepare ako ng lesson, lesson on uh, suspense, how to write suspense so, nung nakasakay ako doon sa train yung mga ugong ng mga gulong, yung chug, 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 tapos yung mga banggaan ng mga uh, cabins, uh, naging putukan sa utak ko, nagiging bumbahan and all of those things. Tapos dumadaan kami sa isang, ano, sa isang uh, uh, foliage, gubat na mayroong river, and doon nabuo yung, ano, yung ambush, uh, chapter, chapter 4 yata yun, mm-hmm. chapter 4 dito sa librong ito. So, <clears throat> Uh, baliktad. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so nabuo yung uh, nabuo doon yung ano and tapos nagsanib-sanib na yung karanasan ko sa seminaryo, yung mga napasya lang kong uh, gubat sa Cordilleras, nagsanib-sanib na sila at saka doon na umusbong yung ano, yung ibang mga chapters. I hope mm. that this, I hope I answer your ano, question with you. 
Wow. Uh, thank, thank you, you Sir uh, Sir Rudy doon sa sharing ng ano no ng inspiration at experience na nandoon pala sa libro. Thank you Ma'am Luci for your question no. I, Ginger yung pa lang sa unang part ng ating forum na yon mm-hmm. it made the book uh, at least for me uh, more interesting kasi pala para pala siyang uh, <laughs> ano ba larger than life but stranger than fiction is that There how you go. say it? <laughs> parang so. ganun sa Diba? So, This is true. Ay, bibili talaga ako. <laughs> okay. I think Jill is... Uh, do you have a question for uh, Sir Rudy? Uh, yes. Um, I do have a question. Um, yeah. First of all, thank you again um, for having me. Uh, and yeah, thanks for writing um, this novel. Um, uh, the question I have is... Uh, So, uh, Rudy, you also seem to have a, a pulse of the revolutionary armed forces in the Cordilleras. Um, just curious, um, how is this possible? How were you able to write um, about uh, the MPA? <laughs> yeah, uh, as I've said earlier, uh, when during my advocacy days, I met the seminal uh, groups of MPAs. At that time, they did not have any guns. I mean, they had very minuscule uh, guns, mga pistola lang, you know. In fact, dun sa Ifugao, when I met this seminal group, ang mga baril nila noon is mga kasama na yung pitbong na tinatawag. These are Japanese guns that were captured by the natives when the uh, uh, Japanese were uh, escaped, uh, were trying to escape the American forces. And they, they got these guns and they, they were still using them. The pit bombs, they were, they were still uh, working at the time. And then in 2004, sometime in 2004, uh, I was able to, I was invited to go in there, to hinterlands, go back there uh, to write an article for the Ventura County uh, newspaper here in California. And this is called the Ventura Star. And uh, I was able to uh, go back And uh, actually, my guide was a second-generation NPA. And when I arrived at their camp, I was so impressed. Nanginginig nga ako dahil yung mga baril nilang lalakas na. You know, meron silang mga M79, meron silang nakalinya lahat yung mga M16, at saka yung mga uh, iba-iba pang baril. So um, <clears throat> to answer your question, I was able to talk to them, interview them, and have a glimpse of what they do. Uh, Inilapat, nailala, nailapat ko yung teorya ng strategy and tactics ng NPA sa katunayan. Nung nagsimula sila hanggang sa uh, <coughs> umigpaw sila sa, ano, sa development. So uh, masasabi natin na I could bear witness sa development talaga ng NPA from very, wala, yung talagang core group pa lang na wala pa sila hanggang sa nag-develop sila. And I think they're still developing Wow. Yes. Uh, another interesting part of history. Yes, it is. You know, Brian, uh, we do have some comments here on Facebook. Oh. I would like to uh, make note of some, if possible, just maybe a few uh, to start, because, of course, we are welcoming everyone to make comments right. and ask their questions. Uh, so, first of all, uh, a comment here from uh, Brandon Lee uh, through Buy in USA's Facebook Uh, mm-hmm. And he says, uh, let me see, that uh, the reviews, the nice book reviews and a beautiful song, uh, the Danum uh, is, uh, goodness, ah, beautiful voices. So thanks so <laughs> much, Brandon, <laughs> for making your comment. Um, we have here another comment as well from Primo Racimo watching from Chicago. Oh. Um, Agbia de Cordillera, budding mm. was. <laughs> And then from Frank, Agbiag. Frank Simatu, he says, Thanks, Kavunyan, Brian, Gagawanda, Nya, Sine, Dapat, Ikao, Nang Vida. Wow. <laughs> And mention, we'll be sure to read more Thank of you, your Frank. comments. <laughs> yes, please okay. make sure you continue to ask your questions in the comments. Ayan. Uh, maraming salamat po doon sa mga kaibigan at mga kasama natin na sumusuporta at sumusubaybay dito po sa ating paglulungsad 
ng librong Red Rising Cordillera na live mula sa Pilipinas at siyempre sa US. Ito pa, kanina doon sa mga portion ng reviews, uh, the next uh, guy na tatawagin natin, no? he gave a very interesting review. In fact, kung, kung babasahin ko yung mismong review niya, Sir Rudy, baka hindi na ako bumili ng libro. <laughs> Dahil halos kompleto yung biligay na review ni ng ating isang kasama, no? isa pang importanteng kasama sa paglulungsad na ito ngayong araw. Uh, magandang umaga po sa inyo dyan sa, sa Netherlands, uh, Professor uh, Jose Maria Season. Kajawa, magandang umaga po. And may konting lag lang. Good morning po sa inyo dyan. Good morning. Nakamute yata si ano si si Professor. Uh, pa unmute po Professor. Uh, you have to press the the mic icon po sa lower left. Nakamute <laughs> po. <laughs> take to tayo, take to tayo. Uh, ganyan po talaga tayo pag live. <laughs> Ayan. Good morning. Good morning po. Teka, ayaw mag-mute. Oh. Ay, ayaw mag-mute. Ayan po, naririnig na po namin kayo. We hear you. Ayaw mag-unmute. Okay. Ayan, narinig na po uh, namin. Can you hear me, Nong? Yes po. Huh? Narinig na po. Um, yes, uh, I will repeat uh, what I said <laughs> while I was muted. No? Uh, yes po, please. I was saying that um, I have said... Uh, all that I want to say about the book, but yes. I would like to uh, um, to declare the crucial importance of the Cordilleras and the activists that I work with in Baguio City and along the mountain trail. And uh, uh, you see, I, uh, in the early years of the revolutionary movement, I divided my time between Central Luzon and um, Northern Luzon, and Northern Luzon became more important uh, subsequently um, after uh, Task Force Lawin concentrated on uh, Central Luzon. So uh, we shifted the emphasis of work in Northern Luzon. And uh, the Cordillera served as my pivot point no? uh, to reach the Locos provinces, the Cordillera, the, the Cordillera provinces, and of course, Cagayan Valley. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the Cordillera's uh, um, I would like to stress the national importance of the Cordilleras um, with regard to developing the revolutionary movement in Northern Luzon, in the whole of Luzon, the whole of the Philippines, and uh, uh, the prospective importance of uh, the Cordillera. This is the backbone uh, of uh, the whole Northern Luzon, and this is where you have depth, no? depth in the revolutionary struggle. So, um, uh, I, I, um, uh, the uh, Baguio City, the mountain trail, and the side roads, uh, either to the Locos or to the uh, to uh, Cagayan Valley, uh, were very important uh, uh, in the development uh, uh, of the movement. Um, and uh, so, um, I cannot mention the names. Eh? Um, since the beginning of the movement, uh, <laughs> I have depended I, on so much on uh, 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 comrades and mass activists in, uh, uh, in the Cordilleras. And um, I would like to mention that um, uh, we work with a wide range of people and even such an innocent uh, a center point of uh, uh, students from all over the northern provinces, like the Bibak uh, dormitory, served as a as a way of disseminating <laughs> the um, uh, the revolutionary message and uh, uh, recruiting activists uh, from all parts of uh, uh, the Cordilleras. So that's all uh, I have to say, and uh, uh, I, I'm providing this background, uh, historical background. Uh, in order for you to appreciate more uh, what Rudy Lipurada has done in um, um, in presenting in fictional terms uh, 
certain uh, factors and trends in the development of the revolutionary movement uh, in the Cordilleras. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Professor Sison, may I ask you a question? The Duterte regime wants to continue its rule on the country. What do you think the people in the countryside can do to contribute to the downfall of this regime? Professor Sison? Yeah. I think, Ginger, we have to repeat the question no? for okay. Professor Sison. My, my hearing is bad. Uh, oh, uh, <laughs> Ginger, can, you, can we do it again? Yes. So, Professor, just wondering, with the Duterte regime wanting to continue its rule on the country... Well, with regard to what the people in the countryside can do, the revolutionary movement specifically can do from the countryside in order to contribute to the downfall of Duterte, I think uh, um, the revolutionary movement in the countryside uh, can very well um, uh, act in concert with the uh, legal democratic mass movement and with the broad united front, uh, uh, the same way that the revolutionary movement played a role uh, in making sure that the Marcos uh, regime was isolated uh, during all that period that he was looking so powerful. Uh, and uh, in, the, in the end game, uh, not many people would recognize uh, that the revolutionary movement uh, uh, it's Teddy Boylock Singh who recognizes clearly that uh, without the revolutionary movement, Marcos would not have been isolated and uh, would not have met his uh, his final uh, his end uh, his, uh, in 1986. But even then, in the background, the revolutionary movement was an important force behind uh, the relatively peaceful and bloodless uh, mass uprising in Manila. Uh, the at least uh, the revolutionary movement uh, inspired people to rise up uh, in the urban areas and at the same time even persuaded the U.S. to junk Marcos. So uh, I don't know how, uh, uh, how intelligent Biden is, uh, politically intelligent in dealing with Marcos. Uh, the U.S. will, uh, will uh, have uh, a role one way or the other in causing the downfall of uh, Duterte, because Duterte is very dependent eh, on a very pro-U.S. Um, reactionary armed forces and police. And the officers there are, um, are I think, more loyal, eh, more loyal to uh, their U.S. superiors uh, than, the, uh, to, uh, um, uh, than to Duterte. Duterte cannot feed all the generals with money. He can only feed uh, some of his favorite generals, but many generals are offended by Duterte's open, uh, open violation of professional standards, you know, and as well as um, uh, Duterte is seen as a traitor, outright traitor, in um, um, in dealing with uh, uh, the China, which has uh, violated. The, the sovereign maritime rights of the Filipino people, especially in the uh, um, in the West uh, in the West Philippine Sea, and uh, uh, military and I have relatives and uh, townmates in the military and police, and they and they uh, uh, they say a lot against uh, the Davao boys, you know, the uh, of uh, Duterte, and um, so uh, they don't like the corruption. Mono, practically monopolized by a few. Uh, not all of them are bad, no? those in the armed forces and police. And uh, 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 many of them are quite capable of, uh, of uh, acting and having sentiments that are patriotic, that are um, mindful of the interests of the people because most of these uh, police and soldiers come uh, from the lower classes, from the masses, from the... Um, uh, the the, the uh, exploited masses actually, um, despite the jobs that they can find in the uh, police and military. So Duterte is, um, um, I think Duterte 
cannot last long. If he, even if he cheats in the elections of 2022, he will not last long because he's very stupid. No, he made, uh, he has uh, deepened the economic uh, uh, crisis. He has bankrupted the government. And I don't know how he will uh, survive. And there is even the problem of uh, paying uh, the salaries and pensions of the military and police, which he has raised. No, imagine every year uh, 900 billion pesos have to be raised uh, at, in order to uh, provide the salaries that he has set uh, that he has uh, set for the military and police. And yet uh, he has he does not give sufficient pay to the teachers and nurses and. Uh, so many uh, important em employees of the government. So um, you you have a regime that is traitorous, uh, uh, tyrannical, Berdugo is the uh, 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 and it's also Mandarambong, plunderer, a, a um, and uh, Duterte used to impress uh, some common minds that he was. A he was stopping uh, the drug problem, but everyone realizes yeah. now that Duterte used the bogus war on drugs only to make himself the supreme drug lord. Uh, the Duterte family, including Duterte uh, and his, uh, and his uh, uh, sons are very much involved in the drug, in the smuggling and distribution of illegal drugs in the Philippines. So uh, people are betrayed, feel betrayed by Duterte. Um, okay. So <laughs> that's 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 a mouthful. <laughs> that's so much about uh, Duterte. Uh, 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 and an adversary in spirit to the book of Rudy uh, Liporada. He, Duterte is part of the problem, no? That uh, uh, the that the uh, uh, that uh, the book of Rudy uh, uh, takes on the count, huh? Is the Duterte is the Marcos uh, collaborating uh, with the imperialist uh, uh, in the time uh, and circumstances covered by the book? Thank wow. you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you, you, that's all I can say. Wow. Uh, as a professor, every time that we ask him talaga to, to give his reactions and to, uh, to share his opinion on. on matters no it really gets him going so talagang makikinig ka na lang talaga sa kanya uh ginger before siguro we uh before we see kung meron mga questions mula sa ating mga uh, netizens kumbaga no i think uh meron akong gusto itanong lang kay sir rudy uh sir uh napagkwentuhan po natin minsan yung inspirasyon ninyo doon sa sa libro uh, may ask po um uh, Noong sinusulat niyo po yung libro, uh, kumpara sa panahon po ngayon, ano po yung mga obserbasyon ninyo at uh, ano po sa tingin ninyo yung um, kahalagahan ng gantong klaseng uh, uh, literatura po sa, 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 sa panahon ngayon dito po sa kinaharap po ng ating lipunan sa kasagutulan. Uh, base po sa mga nalalaman kong nangyayari ngayon sa Cordilleras, palagay ko yung aking uh, aklat, yung aking libro, even if it was during the Marcos time, actually mirrors what is still happening now in the Cordilleras. I mean, the, uh, the Chinese are there uh, trying to uh, develop quote-unquote uh, parts of the uh, Cordilleras. Uh, there are still uh, dams that are being pushed to be uh, uh, to be developed, quote unquote. And uh, actually, there are, I think, movements or uh, pushing. Uh, the government is pushing for the uh, renewal or move. Uh, you push only you know, something like Chico River, or not Chico Dam. Tama ba yung Luchi? It's the Chico Dam Irrigation Pump Project na China funded. Yes. So, ganun pa rin ang nangyayari kung uh, matutuloy yung mga projects na ganyan, masasalamat mm -hmm. yung mga no, kay Gurutan. You know? So, um, at, tapos yung actually yung uh, 
nung, nung, element, I mean, nung elementary ako, nung elementary ako, ang napag-aralan namin na ang sinabi ng teacher ko, grade 1 ako, sabi niya, ang mga pinakakatama, matakot daw na, ano, I'm not gonna name any, you know, province, pero meron daw isang province na dapat katakutan kasi namunulot pa sila ng ulo. Yung, yung something like that. Which, uh, kung pupunta ka naman sa hinterlands, hindi naman ito kasi mababait mo naman yung mga tao. Ah, you know, they're very, very accommodating. Huwag mo lang silang aawain. Kasi as far as I know, ang mga igurot, uh, medyo suspicious yan sa una kung hindi kong stranghero ka. Pero pagka napamahal ka sa kanila, ituturing kanilang anak o kapatid o ma or whatever. And then, uh, ipaglalaban ka nila. No, kung kan- nakuha mo yung kanilang trust, that is what my channel. And I think that was true then and it's still true now. Um, hey. That's your question. <laughs> yes, sir. Ah, sa- salamat po. Salamat po. Kasi uh, para sa akin kasi rin naman, uh, can I just give my opinion on what you said, no, sir? Mm-hmm. Uh, what I learned in college kasi is uh, every time you try to read a book, uh, a novel, or kahit ano pa yan, no, uh, it gives you an idea of the of how life was at a certain point in time that the writer or the author of that novel wrote that book. So mm-hmm. para kang nagbabasa ng biografiya nung, nung, nung manunulat kasi... Uh, yung mga persona sa sarili niya ay sinasalamin ng mga karakter na sinusulat niya. At yung buhay doon sa kwento na pinakikita ay kadalasan sa, sa, sa karanasan natin, no, na nagbabasa rin ng mga libro, ay ano rin eh. Parang um, it, it gives you an idea historically ano yung itsura ng lugar na yon at kung bakit siya naingan yung isulat yung kwento na ito para may matutunan tayo. Yung ba, yung tuntungan natin yung nakaraan na yon sa kasalukuyan. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Maraming salamat po dun sa share po ninyo. Uh, reacting to what you said, you know, any writer can only write about what he or she knows. You know, yes. so, yung, yung halimba, in, uh, in application dun sa libro na yung sa Red Rising of Guerreras, um, yung alam ko lang, yun lang ang pwede kong sabihin, you know, Tapos mayroon din ang mga, mga katang isip na tumasok doon sa libro. Pero, alimbawa, yung pag, pag, how the dry terraces were, ano, were, were, was made, you know. Uh, walang legendary story na alam ko on how that was made. Pero yung lumabas mm-hmm. ng libro, katang isip ko yun, uh, parang kinopya ko lang yun actually sa foolish old man eh. Uh, yung, uh-huh. yung, 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 yung tiyaga ng paggawa ng diasterosis is based on necessity. You know? mm-hmm. And uh, I think that is uh, that is a knowledge that we all know from the things of Marxism, only necessity is the mother of invention. No, mm-hmm. like Ang katangisi din, yung, ano, yung, yung, yung Egyptian and Sina Moses pala sa akin, no, sa panaginit ni... <laughs> sa panaginit ni Julius, katang isip yung, itong si Moses is a general, you know? He was a general. Mm-hmm. Tapos yung crossing of the river, nagpart yung river and everything like that. To me, it was an ambush of the uh, in armed uh, former slaves, you know, na sila yung nag-ambush sa kanila, kaliwat kanan. Yun ang sumakub sa kanila bilang uh, flood, you know, and, or, or yung nag, 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 uh, nag-separate yung sea, tapos nilulun nila yung mga Egyptians. Actually, to me, it's just a parable that over a long period of time na wala yung tunay na nangyari. Nag-gera pala yun. Sa akin yun. yun. <laughs> Katang isip. Ah, wow. Salamat at may mga malilikot ang isip na katulad po ninyo, <laughs> Sir Rudy. Ayusin. Thank you po. Uh, Ginger, do we have questions from our uh, online viewers? Uh, do we have any questions from our online viewers? Let's take a look. There is one question here that I mm-hmm. can read for us. Uh, and this question is from Roki Bukirin. Wants to ask about where there may, where there may be resonating details. Uh, Sir Rudy, he asks, My Altamonte ba talaga saan mo nakuha? 
And then Luchi, uh, what's one or two details that do not seem to resonate to you? Guessing who, what, where these are identifiables and experience will excite the readers too, even if it's fictional. <laughs> I guess the question is from uh, Professor uh, Rowena Bukiren. Ah. Is that right? Wow. I Thank believe you so. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Sige. Yeah. Ang um, and sa sa ang pagkakaalam ko pagdating sa revolusyon uh, lumalabas yung mga you know uh, yung mga kahirapan so altamonte totoo ba ito okay um doon uh, na declare ang martial law nung na declare ang martial law and i hope for professor uh, uh, season will no will uh, forgive me if i say na mayroon mga bumaliktad na mga kasama during that time, you know, like uh, <clears throat> uh, we know for a fact that there is a member of the former uh, uh, yung pinakamataas na ano, mga kasama sa organisasyon nung nahuli sila uh, mga petty bourgeois din na katulad ko okay? uh, itong petty bourgeois na ito na member ng executive committee ng uh, CPP bumaliktad Okay, kasi nahirapan sa ano sa torture nahirapan sa iba mga circumstances so uh, nung nang declare ang martial law ang daming mga uh, underground uh, uh, mga UG houses na nasunog dahil alam na, na mataas yung rango niya sa ano sa kilusan so gumaliktad siya marami siyang itinuro mga uh, uh, UG houses doon nagkaroon ng maraming ano sunog kasi uh, ano yung pagtawag dito? Uh, doon sa mga nahuli, meron din mga nanghina. No? So, parang naging domino system. Ang yung domino ba? Yung, ano, yung pagkakahuli ng iba, na torture yung iba, na matay. Yung, 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 yung mataas na official na ito, uh, na, nasa lanta ang maraming kasama, may mga namatay. And uh, as far as I know, he was executed also. Kasi sa sa kilusan as we pa, as far as we know mayroong mga uh, nagiging uh, traitors it's hard to say that but that is a reality and we face reality kaya ngayon ang, 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 ang alam ko lang ang security ng movement is very 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 you know, tight thank you oh. I'm very Okay, go ahead, Ginger. Oh, I was just saying I will be very excited to see. I, I understand you have a screenplay of your novel already. <laughs> oh, yeah. Actually, it has been written already. And uh, as far as uh, we are concerned with the professor season, we just need, as, as, as you have said, we just need a serious producer to, uh, to produce that. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. it's it's a Phil M here living in the U.S. We're sometimes distant from this sort of history and the sort of struggles and stories. So I think it would be really a wonderful way to also bridge some of those gaps. So we look forward to it. And I'm looking forward to receiving my book tomorrow. Again, it's available on Amazon. Uh, it's available in the Kindle and soon some Mount Cloud Bookshop Sabagyo. Wow. Um, maraming maraming salamat po, Sir Rudy. Maraming salamat, Luchi. Jill, thank you very much, uh, Professor Jose Maria Season. Maraming maraming salamat po sa, sa inyong panahon na ibinigay ko para sa ating forum. I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, this open forum uh, just made the book more interesting and it's going to uh, really uh, excite our, our viewers, our friends to purchase their own copies of the book come, uh, well, it's actually available, as Ginger said, sa Amazon.com and Kindle. And watch out uh, this September para po sa uh, kanyang uh, release sa Mount Cloud Bookshop sa Baguio City. Alam po namin na napakarami pa po ng inyong mga nais na itanong sa ating pong uh, manulat at sa mga bisita po natin ng mga reviewers and actors po sa ating programa ngayong umaga. Ngunit talagang limitado lamang po ang ating oras. Kaya hanggang dito na lang po muna itong bahagi na to ng ating programa. Maraming maraming salamat po muli Sir Rudy sa pagbabahagi sa amin ng impormasyon, ng mga mga impormasyon, inspirasyon, uh, backstory, kung ano man po yung mga interesting na binigay niyo po sa amin ngayong araw. 
tungkol po sa inyong aklat na Red Rising Cordilleras. Talaga nakasasabik na mabasa ito, kaya muli ang Red Rising Cordillera, ulit-ulitin po natin, ay mabibili sa Amazon, sa Kindle, at soon sa Mount Cloud Bookshop sa Baguio City. Yan. Yes. Thank you, Brian. Oh my goodness, it's been so wonderful to co-host another one of these with you again. Yeah, Now, Brian, and with you too. <laughs> the next performance will further inspire us in reading the book, for it also speaks about the unbreakable bond between the Igorot and their ancestral lands. Now, to perform the song Daga Anagta Udan, here's the Cordillera-based group Sally Dumai. Maraming salamat sa inyong inihandog na malakwentong awitin tungkol sa pamumuhay at dedikasyon ng mga taga-Cordillera sa Lidumay. Tunay na ang lupa ay buhay at marapat lamang na protektahan natin ito mga kasama at kasama na rin ang mga katutubong nakatira dito laban sa pangangamkam at mga kumpersyon. And now as we approach the end of our program, Let's listen to the closing remarks by a youth leader of the Cordilleras, Ned Tuginay of Progressive Igorots for Social Action. Ayan. Uh, muli ako po si Ned Tuginay mula po sa Progressive Igorots for Social Action. 
Uh, ang Progressive Igorots for Social Action po ay isang organisasyon ng mga katutubong igorot dito sa Cordillera. Um, bago po tayo magsara, di pasasalamat po sa lahat ng naging bahagi at dumalo sa ating maikling programa, lalong-lalo na po kay Manong Rudy sa kanyang uh, bagong obra no na siyang nagtatalakay sa uh, kasaysayan ng mga kaigorotan. At sa gayon din po, babasahin ko rin po ang mensahe namin hinggil po dito sa libro ni Sir Rudy na Red Rising Cordilleras. Nabara ka blaaw yu amin kun may samot lang nga nakangato agamgam ima ti amin nga kakadwa gagayem kan kakailian nga nakipasag ti daytoy a programa. It is with great enthusiasm that we welcome another contribution to the growing literature from the Cordillera. It is with greater enthusiasm that we welcome a novel, a form that has remained elusive to most Cordilleran writers at present. That delivers a powerful image of Cordillera as it is seen in the eyes of people who chose to bear arms for our national liberation. The novel begins with a harrowing incident that is all too familiar for our communities in the countryside. We are brought to a shock as we relive the many stories of militarization, human rights violations, harassment, and killings. In our minds and collective memory, We see history unfold its bloody pages for the massacres that Igorotan have suffered in their long years of struggle, dating even back to the times of colonization. Clearly, as the novel explicitly shows, our people have already suffered enough, and it is with this suffering that our search for justice continues. Red Rising Cordilleras paints us a picture of what it takes to fight for the justice we deserve. The situation of the Kaigorotan and the Filipino people that informs the novel is no different to what is happening now. The region is riddled with development aggression projects assisted by intense militarization. At the fact that the fascist Duterte regime has been relentless in its foolish counterinsurgency programs that only prove the validity of the movement it wants to crush. And more so within the Great Cordillera Mountains are continuing stories of harassment, killings, and imperialist plunder. But there is also a story of a revolution which we can read in the book we are launching today. The story of a revolution is what we need in this time of tyranny and dictatorship. We must read together, exhume the stories of our martyrs and heroes, and remind ourselves that the great and noble causes we forward today are worth the thousands of lives before us and millions of those who will come after us. Karit nga ruti amin na saan laang abasaan dahi yung libro. Nudikot pagadalan pa iti kasasaan ti umili kung ti pakaistoryaan ti kaigorotan at nung maawatan nung apay nga adda ti mapaspasama ka revolusyon. Para kang dagiti padami nga agtutubong igorot, karkarong nga kasapulan tayong amuan dagiti istorya ti amin ako diamat, Carlos Noel Lina kung da dumapay nga tataong nga mabasa tayo ito yung Red Rising Cordilleras. Kaput na adda tayo ti panawin nga ti pakaistoryaan tayo kung sistematiko abalbaluktutan ti estado. Agyaman tayo kay ni Manong Rudy, tipa nakasurat na may sa anobela nga mabalin ama osar, tipa nagtultuloy tayo nga panag-adal ko yung panagtignay. Agbiag ti kay Gorotan, agbiag ti umili a Pilipino, nagabiag kinabak ng salak ni Man. Maraming salamat po. Maraming 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 salamat sa iyo, Ned Tuginay, para sa iyong napakagandang Uh, mensahe ng pagsasara ng ating programa at siyempre pinaka-importante yung iniwan mo na hamon sa iyong mensahe dito sa bahagi ng ating programa. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo lahat. And I guess, uh, Ginger, that's a wrap. Lubos po kaming nagpapasalamat sa ating mga panauhin at sa mga dumalo po sa ating paglulungsad ng aklat na Red Rising Cordilleras ngayong araw. Muli po, papaalala po namin sa inyo, mabibili ang Red Rising Cordillera sa Amazon.com at sa Kindle. And by September 30, we will have copies available at Mount Cloud Bookshop in Baguio City. You may also send an email to the book publishers to request or to inquire about copies at redrisingcordilleras at gmail.com. Ulitin natin, redrisingcordilleras, all small letters at gmail.com. At sa bahagi na ito, ay papakita na po natin ang ating mga kailangan pasalamatan at mga naging katuwang katulong sa paglulungsad dito ng ating programa. Na 
bilbilag Titib ker titak dermo Anya pa'y tinalang lamin Kas ti pul o'y ti angin ay ay Sin sin toksik a Lay lay daksik a ay ay Cordillera Salak ni Banca
sumil silap kay kayo nakatay tayo